and do a brief devotional with everyone. You can be seated or you can be standing. It'll be, it'll be brief. I do want to welcome everyone for, for coming today. Today is a little different. Um, today is just, just worship lyrically, musically, um, because you can pray, that's still worship, and you can preach, and that's still worship. But today we're going to be focusing more on the adoration side with our, our voices and with music. But before I get into what I'm saying, I do want to personally, I guess, um, introduce myself because I haven't introduced me to all of you, but I'm Victoria. Um, I've been interning here this past summer, and I've loved it, you know. It's been such a good time. I've learned so many, got to know so many amazing people. <clears throat> and I feel really blessed. And today what I'm going to be talking about is God's calling in our lives. If you have your Bible, if you can open with me in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 6 through 13. It says this, verse 6. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for, ha for, I, for I, I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and, and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had his other son pass by. But Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, the Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sat and had him brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. And reading this passage, it, it just makes me think how, you know, how specific God is. You know, he, he had told Samuel that the anointed one was um, among Jesse's son. And you see that David was, he was young. He was tending the sheep, so all his brothers were home doing nothing while David was taking care of the sheep. He was occupying himself, and Jesse didn't even believe that his son, the youngest son, had the capability to be king, that he was fit to be king. But when God has a calling in your life, no one can take that away. Even, even you, you can run, but God will find you. And he will, he will put situations in your life that will make you come back to him for you, so that his plans can be fulfilled. You know, he calls us so that we can bring his kingdom's um, name, you know, so that we can make his kingdom known. To make his name known, not to exalt ourselves, but to make to exalt him. God doesn't call us because of our exterior or what we want him to see, but because of our heart. We just saying here that he searches much deeper. You know, sometimes we we try to we build up walls around our hearts and 
we can uh, we don't allow others to see what's inside but God sees what's inside you know we we sometimes think that what we're doing for the Lord or is not a big deal but for God it is a big deal he doesn't look at how much you give him he doesn't look at at the the immensity let's just say he looks at your heart he looks at where your desires are that you are following his plans that you are putting his desires first that you are wanting to walk in his path that he has for you and this is what impresses me of of David he was fulfilling the role of of what it um what pastors, you know, are uh, compared to, you know. He was taking care of the sheep. He was being mindful of God's creation, of protecting them. And if you look at his brothers, they were, they were all trying to kind of show off, like, oh, yeah. You know, I've been lifting these um, pillars of water for a long time, but that's not what God looks at <laughs> and if you want to receive God's calling in your life occupy yourself with something occupy yourself with something David example he was with the sheep he was occupying himself with something You know, and discouragement will come, you know, and people will say, oh, what you're doing is, you know, you could be doing more, more for this, more for this. You can get more money with this. But if what you're doing is for the Lord, he will provide, he will, he will protect you. He will um, keep walking with you in your path. And sometimes God calls us to step out of our comfort zone. And, you know, step away from our fears. And we serve a God that pays the closest attention to the smallest details. If we read, um, sorry. If we read the part where it says that, that Samuel said, send for him, we will not sit down until he arrives. You can see the urgency that they had for there to be a king. He had told, he had told his men that they were not going to sit down until the anointed one had come. And what just kind of makes makes me mind blown is how God handpicks us with all of our baggage is without with all of our flaws he handpicks us and calls us to sit with him at his table to to be part of God's round table you know and so today I encourage you to keep pursuing what God's calling is and if you already know what the calling is to do it with excellence, but to not worry what other people are, are thinking because what, the only thing that matters is what God thinks. And if he put you in a position where, where you are fulfilling his plans, it's because he knows that you are capable and that you, that you can do his works. Maybe you, it is training, maybe it is um, going more deep into his word, spending more time with God. But he already did his part. He already called you. Now you just have to accept and do your part. You know, God is looking for our availability, our responsibility and commitment. And that's where he, he gives his calling. Heavenly Father, 
God, I just call upon your name, God. God, and I pray for each and every one of us starting here, God. God, I just pray that if someone is looking to know what their calling is, God, I just pray that they may that they may be shown it. God, and maybe they don't even know that it's where they are right now. God, I, but I just pray that that they will not have the fear to step out of their comfort zone, God, that they may dive in to know more of you. God, that they may be sensitive to hear your voice. God, that they, that they may make themselves available so that you can guide their every step. God, and we just thank you that you love us unconditionally, God, that you do not look at the, the outward appearance, God, that you do not look at our flaws, but that you lavish us with your love, your love that surpasses everything, God, your love that satisfies, that, it, God, that you even quench our thirst, God. God, so we just, we just thank you for everything, Father. In your name we pray. Sing this with me. Lord, you are so worthy. You're so worthy of praise and honor and glory, God. Lord, we lift you up in this place this morning, God. We praise your name. Lift your voice. Praise the Lord. Come on. Lord, we lift up your name today. You are powerful. You are great. You are holy. You are holy, O oh God. Lord, not because we say it, but because you are. You are. It is the truth that will forever be the truth. You rule. You reign. You have all power, all authority over my life, this world, our lives together, God. You can overcome anything, Lord. Nothing is impossible for you. God, we thank you for that truth. We thank you that you love us, God. We thank you, Lord, that you've forgiven us. God, we receive your forgiveness today. We say thank you, Lord, that as far as the east is from the west, God, that you've forgiven us. And God, your power is available, available to us by the power of your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you, Lord, that you're always with us. You are Emmanuel, God with us. We thank you, God. Come on, praise him again. God, we thank you so much, God. You're so good. You're so good, Lord. You're so good. Well, you know, uh, this morning, uh, I don't know <clears throat> necessarily what you expected today, but God's Word has been preached through song, through um, prophetic word today. Please be seated. Um, but the, the Holy Spirit is here. And sometimes, sometimes you just need a little encouragement. Okay, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. And the hardest thing in this life is giving up control of your life. Giving up control. We kind of joked at the Iron Man retreat, you know, we had a van going down and we could have taken two vans down. Uh, but somebody made the comment, there's 13 cars here. Look at all the control freaks we have. 
We're all wired to want to control this life, okay? For ourselves, it's like we were at Kaiser on uh, Friday, and uh, it's kind of forced valet parking. And I'm like, eh. you know, and okay, come on, guys, it's a 2005 car, you know. But I'm just like, eh, you know, like, you know, it's not like I'm handing off my Maserati, but I'm just like, you know, ah, that's hard to do. But this is what, this is what it is: living this life, following in the fo- following in the steps of our Lord, giving up control of our life, trusting Him. Many of you know what to do today. You know what God is already asking you to do through this service. The Holy Spirit's already been clear to you today in what to do. Now, be courageous and do it. Be courageous. If it's offering your life to the Lord, great. If it's having that conversation, do that too. But be courageous The Holy Spirit has been here this morning. He's been speaking. Have we been listening? Have we been listening? There is power in his name. He will help you. He'll help you this week. Accomplish those things in your life that he's laid out. It's a myriad of things in this place. You know, if if everyone was completely honest about what was going on in their life, and we frankly don't have the time today, I know this, But God has been speaking today. He's been speaking through the worship. He's been speaking through the prophetic voice here today. And uh, the challenge is obey. Obey what he's calling you to do. Be obedient. Be courageous. And you won't be disappointed. You won't be disappointed. You'd never lose by following the Lord. You never lose. You always win. You always gain. Um, We win because we know who won, (laughs) okay? He defeated sin and death on the cross. Aren't you grateful today? I know I sure am, yeah. And do you like this worship band or what, you know? I mean, they, and Victoria today, um, she's just kind of slid in here like she's always been part of our family. And uh, it's been so great having her with us, and, and she, unfortunately has one more, just one more uh, Sunday with us before she goes back to Evangel uh, College, but uh, we've told her you are always welcome back here. Please come back. Um, And it's so great to have her parents even with us today, so make sure you say hi to them as well. Uh, They're uh, proud of their daughter, and they should be. They should be. There's some next steps for you as the ushers come this morning. We've got some next steps. First one is to read 1 Samuel 16, verses 6 through 13. And these are the verses that uh, Victoria read to us this morning. And then evaluate. Have you been pursuing after God's calling for your life, regardless of who's watching? Regardless of who's watching. Sometimes we control what we do because of those that are around us. And uh, what we need to really be concerned about is that God's watching. He's the one that really matters in our life. And then action Ask God to give you discernment against discouragement and fears. And um, if we were honest, there's always this fear. You know, sometimes we change the word in Christian circles. We're like, well, I'm concerned. (laughs) You know, type of thing. But when the Lord's with us, we don't need to fear. We don't need to fear. We can step out in faith. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for our day. Thank you so much for the opportunity to give Uh, This morning, Lord, just bless every giver. And for those that are stepping out maybe for the first time in giving, Lord, just bless them. Help them to understand and know this is your plan and that it's really all yours anyway. We thank you for what you're going to do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.